What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So we're gonna be checking out the self destruction of CM Punk by WrestleMania man. Uh, yeah, this year has been crazy for just wrestling as a whole. This whole CM Punk situation, uh, I do feel like it possibly could have been avoided. Definitely could have been handled a lot better. But ultimately, uh, it's it's what we have now and. We're in a situation where I don't think AEW uh, wants to have anything to do with him. And I don't think WWE wants to even bring him back. So it's going to be interesting to see where things go in the future for CM Punk. But I think his wrestling days may be done. I'm not sure we will see. But let's see what uh, WrestleMania is talking about. Appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on channel. CM Punk is one of the most polarizing names in pro wrestling history. Upon his controversial departure from WWE in 2014, Punk seemingly distanced himself from pro wrestling altogether, deciding to explore new avenues such as MMA and acting, but the success of these ventures is probably a topic for another video. <laughs> Not the, when Punk the, left the WWE yelling. and subsequently shared his perceived truth on the Colt Cabana podcast, fans and several WWE talents were firmly on his side. Punk had a terrible experience in WWE and his mm -hmm. mental and physical health were negatively impacted as a result of his time in the company. But when Punk decided to join AEW in the summer of 2021, nobody saw it coming. No. It was common belief that within the wrestling fandom that Punk had officially retired. But Punk seemed to like the environment that was presented in AEW and had strong relationships with key figures in the company. During Punk's first months in the company, it was apparent just how happy he was. He would reveal in every media interview he took part in just how the backstage atmosphere in AEW was allowing wrestlers to thrive and how it's really crazy how things were at a all-time high for CM Punk and then it just went downhill like quickly you know after you know of course the injuries and you know that kind of slowing down his momentum I mean it's just really insane to know that CM Punk came back only for him to damn near be out the door a year later. It's just insane. How AEW had some of the best in-ring talent in the entire world. He was welcomed into AEW with open arms, and there were rumors that Punk was helping out younger talent, and he was a pleasure to be around. Whilst this certainly seemed to be true during Punk's early days in the company, in 2022, this positive perception has completely disintegrated, and Punk is now resented by the AEW locker room. How exactly did this happen? And is yeah, it anyway is, back for Punk? This is insane that we're really talking about this. I. This is crazy. Now, when he arrived in AEW, one of the things that fans were curious about was just how Punk and Colt Cabana were going to coexist in the same locker room. Punk and Cabana were previously best friends, but that was until a fallout ensued and a vicious and malicious legal battle took place between the two men. There was no news in relation to if there was any issues between the two internally in AEW, but that was until it was reported that Cabana was quickly moved to their Ring of Honor roster. This bizarre move was believed to be formulated by AEW President Tony Khan who mm -hmm. wanted Cabana to be nowhere near Punk in order to keep his resident top guy happy and content. Cabana would be one of the names that Punk would name drop in his infamous All Out press conference rant and fans were quick to call out Punk for his unfair comments against someone who is genuinely well liked in the locker room. Punk would state, I haven't had anything to do with Scott Colton in almost a decade, probably wanted nothing to do with him even longer than that. It's effing unfortunate that I have to come up here and speak on this when I'm on my time. This is my effing business. Why am I a grown ass adult man and I decide to not be friends with somebody is nobody else's effing business. My relationship with Scott Colton ended long before I paid all of his bills. Fans believe that this was an inappropriate time to air dirty laundry and it simply made punk look. Yeah, I, I can agree with some people saying, granted, no one even really brought him up. He saw someone that he uh he knew was at one point cool with uh Colt Cabana, um Scott Colton or whatnot. So he kind of just leaned into it because the guy didn't even ask about it. No one asked about any of this. He just said, "Fuck it, I'm just gonna let it rip." So I don't I don't know, man. This is this is where Punk takes some responsibility there because he kind of put it out there. He didn't have to address none of this because no one asked. No one asked. 
You know, so that's that's the situation. And, you know, you got Tony Khan. He didn't really mediate. He didn't stop this from happening either. Look bitter and resentful. In relation to Cabana, he refused to fire back at Punk in a similar manner, which was a wise move as it presented Colt Cabana as the more mature individual of the two. One of the first occasions during Punk's AEW run where fans turned on Punk was when he began to have issues with Hangman Adam Page. Page is one of the most popular and beloved wrestlers in the modern era. This also extends to how Punk is perceived backstage by his peers. He had issues with Page because Page apparently went off on a tangent during a promo segment and threw some remarks at Punk that he was uncomfortable with. Punk was so furious with Page for doing this and seemingly going into business for himself that in August 2022, it was reported that Punk was legitimately close to quitting the company. Punk carried a lot of hatred towards Page following this. Mm -hmm. Shortly after the incident, Punk went off script completely during a promo on yep. AEW Dynamite and decided to call out Page by declaring, Nah, that's not cowboy shit, that's coward shit. This threw everyone off guard as it wasn't remotely planned and it was evident that Punk was trying to make Paige look completely inferior. Yeah, he fucking buried him. I remember that promo saying he was supposed to be building up a match with Jon Moxley. He started going. This is after he came back <clears throat> from injury. So it was weird of the timing of this shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, if he came back from injury or whatever. Don't know who's at the gate. But uh, he came back from injury, and um, after that, that's when it was like he just decided to just put this out there. He just was like, you know what? Fuck it. Fuck you. <laughs> uh, fuck, fuck you. Fuck your gimmick. You ain't you ain't nothing. You know what I'm saying? You ain't going to come out there and challenge for this title, which he knew he wasn't going to be out there because it wasn't part of the show. Uh, yeah, he definitely kind of buried Adam Page, so I don't know if that was probably the right move. I don't know if anything, probably nothing got resolved in the back, so I don't know, man. It was just, it, I get CM Punk's gripe here, like, going into business for yourself is definitely not what's up, but you don't come back months later and then just say, fuck it, let me, while I'm supposed to be building up another feud, let me go ahead and bury this guy that has nothing to do with the feud. Punk was quite rightly called out for this. This was some WCW in the year 2000 levels of craziness that didn't belong in AEW. It was unprofessional, selfish, and Tony Khan should have taken immediate action, but he didn't, which brought yep. into question Khan's integrity as a boss. Mm -hmm. Punk's issues with Paige only worsened from there, as during the infamous press conference, Punk will once again bring up Paige by stating, what did I ever do in this world to deserve an empty-headed effing yeah, dumb F like him and got a page to go out on national television and effing go into business for himself? For what? What did I do? What did I ever do? Didn't do a goddamn thing. I'm trying to run an effing business, and when somebody who hasn't done a damn thing in this business jeopardizes the first million dollar gate this company had ever drawn off my back and goes on national television and does that, it's a disgrace to this industry. It's a disgrace to this company. Now we're far beyond apologies. Fans were utterly speechless at Punk's yep. <laughs> comments. It wasn't just Paige and Cabano who Punk targeted, as he also made comments directed to the elite. Mm -hmm. There's people who call themselves EVPs that should have effing known better. This shit was none of their business. Now, the elite consisting of the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega justifiably weren't happy with Punk's comments, and the trio proceeded to storm into Punk's locker room following the press conference. Here was when a physical commotion ensued, yep. and it was reported that punches were thrown, and an AEW trainer A. Steele would even reportedly bite Omega. It was a total disaster. This whole ordeal was seriously damaging to the legitimacy and credibility of AEW as a thriving wrestling promotion. All In the aftermath chaos. of the physicality, the members were suspended. A steal was eventually released, and, well, Punk was put on the injured list. Tony Khan ruled that an independent third party needed to investigate what happened. The investigation was finished in late October with the outcome of the investigation not being disclosed to the fans. However, notable news source PW Insider had heard that the investigation was a complete farce. Punk has made mortal enemies out of so many people in AEW, and most of it was via his own actions. There's certainly an argument that can be made that the elite went about their response to Punk in the wrong manner as being executives of a company, violence is never the answer. This is However, true. it looks like this wasn't the first time that the elite had taken exception to something Punk had said. It goes without saying that the elite have a brilliant relationship with Adam Page, so Punk berating their friend every chance he could get was naturally cutting deep. AEW was in serious trouble following the incident, especially from a PR perspective, as from the outside the company looked like complete bedlam. 
Thankfully, AEW currently has some great people in the locker room. People such as Chris Jericho, John Moxley and Brian Danielson have stepped up since the press conference and have shown the younger talent that the type of behaviour from the likes of Punk is not okay and AEW is going to be a fun place to work again. But for the most part, these comments have come to fruition as reports indicate that morale is up since Punk was placed on the AEW's injured list. As things stand, AEW are reportedly attempting to buy out Punk's contract. Mm. That's right, Punk has gone from being the biggest star in AEW to AEW attempting to do everything they can to seize their relationship with him. It looks like AEW talent aren't exactly pushing for Punk to ever return. This can be seen just by taking a look at the inaugural AEW World Champion Chris Jericho's Twitter likes. He liked a tweet in October 2022 that completely ripped into Punk, so it appears that Jericho isn't exactly the biggest fan of the former AEW World Champion. But it wasn't just the elite, Chris Jericho or other AEW talent that really didn't sit well with him. Temporary talent Bobby Fish also had this to say in an interview with NBC 10 Count. Interestingly enough, there was a little whatever in the match we had. Phil was after the match. Phil was a, frankly, wow. as a martial artist, I went out and laid my shoulders down for you. And you should be grateful that I did because on national television, if I decided that I wanted to effing haku your ass, I could have because you're that little of a threat in my world. AEW talent. Now the Bobby Fish stuff, uh, it kind of comes off as cloud chasing. Whether he had issues with him or not, it definitely came off as like cloud chasing. Like, bro, okay, calm down, Bobby Fish. Like, it just it seemed that way. He could have a, a viable point, but the Bobby Fish whole situation, it just literally came out of nowhere. He kind of inserted himself in this drama, and it was just like. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it just came off as clout chasing. Eddie Kingston, who recently feuded with CM Punk, also didn't have some nice words to say about the Second City Saint. In an interview with Inside the Ropes, he mentioned, No, no, there's no like there. He doesn't like me. I don't like him. I don't think that we're ever going to like each other. I'm just being honest with you. We're never going to see eye to eye, and I'm not a very forgiving person. So no, I have no desire to be friends with him, and he has no desire to be friends with me. We just do not like each other. Man. That's it. It's been a crazy few months for AEW and Punk, and it looks like Punk's name is officially tarnished forever. Punk has gone from one of the most desirable free agents in the world to being one of the most loathed in the wrestling business. And this all just happened within about a year. Yeah. This might not be the end for Punk, as it's also been debated and speculated as to whether he could go to WWE if they ever made him an offer. The issue is that Triple H virtually runs WWE now that Vince McMahon has retired and it's well documented just how much Triple H and Punk loathe each other. Mm -hmm. In a recent interview, it did suggest that Triple H may let bygones be bygones and he could potentially put the prior bad blood behind him. It was reported that an influential figure in WWE is completely against the idea of Punk returning. Yeah. The name of this mystery figure remains undisclosed, at least for now though. Punk though is in a difficult predicament. And whilst his AEW run initially was thrilling, compelling and entertaining, it's quickly turned into a political fueled, a toxic mess that has resulted in him doing more damage than good. Well, there you have it folks, the incredible- yeah, man. The, the whole situation of him potentially going to, uh, um, WWE um, Triple, uh, Triple H is definitely um, down to bury the hatchet for business purposes because obviously he knows that's that's big money but there's uh, other higher ups that are like mm, I don't know about this especially not right now and considering the whole situation with CM Punk's contract and maybe there being some type of cause where he can't compete for so many years or whatever the case may be because if they were to let him go and then he just goes to WWE one it would kind of be it would be one of those things where it'll be very people would look at Punk a little different I was like damn bro you went over here kind of caused some chaos you didn't initially start it but you kind of added more fuel to the fire than you had to to only leave well you know they buy you out because it wasn't going to work to go to wwe a place where you made it seem as if you would never go to again that's actually you know people will be like damn that's hmm, that's crazy punk so i don't know i don't know if that will happen i know I, I, we've had this conversation would you guys want him back a lot of you guys said yeah he would be a big draw and then there's a lot of you guys that are saying no, he, he needs to go ahead and hang it up, man. So, I don't know where his future lies, but I will say this, man. Uh, 2022, once again, has, has been a crazy year for wrestling. And I never thought I would see CM Punk 
in this situation so quickly after returning back to wrestling is it's really it's kind of sad to be honest with you man uh, i feel like he had a lot of great things that he could have contributed to aew but uh unfortunately this is what happens with you know sometimes your emotions get the best of you and you end up not seeing clearly and seeing the bigger picture sometimes it's better to let bygones be bygones for the better for the betterment of the whole situation so comment down below let me know are you guys still fans of cm punk or are you guys you know after this whole situation saying nah i'm good i'm good with cm punk i i'm, I'm you know I'm, I'm not a really big fan of him anymore let me know if you guys still support him or if you don't support him at all because of everything that's happened but i appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel road to 100k appreciate y'all kicking with me see y'all next one peace